What's up everybody, Lucas here. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own twin. I will show you the quick and simple hey, way, what's up, bro? and then the slightly more advanced, more deceiving way. So if you have no friends like me, you can still get the Let's job just done. just go. Whatever, dude. But you gotta focus. First things first, the camera setup is extremely important. You want to be sure your camera is completely still throughout the entire filming process of your scene. Also, it helps to have your camera set to a manual setting, that way the exposure and colors aren't shifting all around and you need to do a lot of fixing in post. Now you gotta pick a side for each character. I'm gonna choose my left for my first guy, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna say some dialogue, and I'm gonna imagine my imaginary friend speaking back to me. Hey, what's up bro? Now I'm gonna stick to that story, I'm gonna change outfits, optional, and I'm gonna go be that imaginary character. Now the important part is I'm in a region on the screen where the first character never stepped into. Now I remember the dialogue I just said to this character and I tried to respond Nothing. in an accurate, timely manner. Can you leave me alone, please? This is important when it comes to making the dialogue look fluid and honestly just takes a little practice. That does it for filming. Let's bring it over into our editing software and I'll show you how to make it look like they're interacting with each other. So we're over here in Premiere Pro. What you're gonna wanna do is drag your clip that you just recorded into the timeline. Now I recorded this all as one clip, but you could have recorded it as two clips. I just like to keep it as one because, you know, why not? So I'm gonna isolate my first guy's scene, cutting it right before he comes in and then right when he leaves. And then I'm gonna scroll through the rest of the clip and find my second guy reacting to the first guy because I recorded it all as one clip but then again you, if you wanted to you could record two separate clips just remember to keep the camera still I have my second guy reacting to it and I make the clip about as long as the first one now I bring the clips close together the first and the second one I'm gonna change the color of the guy in the red to red uh -huh. so you can tell between the two clips now for this technique, it doesn't matter which one's on top and which one's on the bottom, but I'm going to bring the red guy to the top and I'm going to drag it over the blue guy clip. Now, as you can see, it's still only the red guy. So now the magic. Go up to the effects tab, type in crop, or just find the crop tool. Drag it on the clip on the top. So I'm going to drag it to the guy in the red. Nothing has happened. Now go over to the effects tab in the upper left corner and look for the crop tool. Now the blue guy comes in from the left. So in the crop tool, you will see a percentage for the left. What you wanna do is drag that percent up. And this is going to crop the left of the clip of the guy in the red because that's where we applied the crop tool to. And you see you can go too far, not far enough. What you wanna do is you wanna crop it just far enough to get both of the guys in frame. Now this is the reason it was important not to have the blue guy cross over into the red guy's path because cropping can only take away from the clip. You will see there's a clear line between the two of them. To get this to go away and be more subtle, there's a little option in the crop tool called feathering. This helps blend the two clips together Instead of having that solid line, it creates more of a blur between the two clips. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn the feather up high enough, but not too high. Because if you go too high, it'll start to hit one of the characters. Your character will start to kind of disappear. Now, I did notice my blue character does look a little dark most of the clip. So all we're gonna do is go over to the Lumetri Color tab into basic correction and turn the exposure up just a bit to see if that helps fix it on the blue guys clip and it looks like it did now I just kind of move the clips around so their dialogue works good together and there you have it hey what's up bro nothing can you leave me alone please all right all right, now let's move on to the more advanced twinning and fool everybody. So this one starts just like the last one. You wanna keep the camera perfectly still, ideally keep it on a manual setting. Now, 
You're going to have one character in the foreground and one in the background. And you're going to have the characters overlap, creating more of a real scenario. People are going to be like, wait a minute, he's got a twin. Now I'm going to record my character in the foreground first. That just means the character in front first. Everything's just cheery. A secret tip for this guy that makes it a lot easier in post is try to hold perfectly still. You will see why this really helps in a second. Now I'm going to remember the timing of the first guy's dialogue. I'm going to remember the scene I want to create and I'm going to play my second character, the guy in the back. Bro, seriously, is everything okay? And I'm going to have him walk behind my first character if my first character was actually there. Once again, trying to match up the dialogue takes a little practice, like a mulp, but makes all the difference. All right, now we're back in our video editing software. We're going to drag this clip onto the timeline. Once again, I recorded one entire clip. I didn't record two. So I'm going to make a cut at the first guy's scene in the beginning where I want it to start and where I want it to end. Now I'm going to isolate the second scene with the guy in the back, making the clips approximately the same length. Now dragging the clips on top of each other. A little trick I like to do is turn the opacity down on one of the clips so I can see through them and match up the dialogues before I get into any more advanced editing. That way you can kind of see how it's going to lay out when you get it done to its final form. Important, you want to have the guy in the front on the top. I mean, you don't have to, but it just makes it easier. Okay, so the red guy is actually going to go on top. I'm making the clip red so you can tell between the two. So I got the red guy on top. Now, the reason I held very still is because what we're going to do is we're going to apply a mask to the red clip. We're basically going to cut him out, just him out, of his clip so that he's the only thing that exists in his clip and whatever we put underneath him is going to shine through, hence the guy in the blue. Select the red clip, go to the effects tab in the upper left. You will see over by opacity in the effects tab there's this little pen tool. Click on that and that activates the masks. Now very carefully, so I recommend blowing the screen up a little bit, you're going to want to trace around the guy in the red. You just do this by clicking, moving the mouse and then clicking all around the guy in the red. Getting as close to his outline as possible. So drag away, I click, I pull the little dot towards him, bringing it as close to his outline as possible. I make more dots around more detailed areas because there's more bumps and a little bit less on the straightaways. Now, at the end, you're going to connect them and you're going to notice it's either going to shine right through and you're going to see black or it's going to shine through to the clip underneath. So because the clip underneath is the guy in the blue, you see him. So you can see if I turn off the vision of clip one, it's just pure black. And you can see how this mask works. So there's a few options in the masking tool. You'll notice there's feathering, there's mask expansion and opacity and inversion. Inversion just flips it around. So if you want it to be the opposite, just click that, but no. Feather, what that does is it feathers, feathers it. Feathering's good a little bit, but too much. Everything starts to get blurry and washed out. So I'm gonna turn up the feather just a little bit. Now you notice there's like a halo looking thing around this guy. And when I put the guy in blue, bring him back to life by turning his vision back on, you'll notice you can see that halo. So I turn the mask expansion down. That means that pulls the mask in. But if I do that too much, it's gonna just start sucking away my character I just masked out. So what you need to do is you need to kind of get into the nitty gritty, zoom in, and pull each of those little markers that you traced around and try to tighten them up just a tad but not too much so it's just a little bit of handy work so i zoom in and i try to pull it right to his head right to his hair now the trick is you want to pull it as close as you can without pulling it too much to where it starts to look really distorted it's not going to be completely perfect but it's going to get it done and when people are watching the scene as a whole it's most likely if you do a decent job they're not gonna even notice. But as you can see, I kinda had it going a little tight on my head and it looks like my head's smaller. Whatever, it was big anyways. 
Wow, everybody's fooled. Everybody's thrown off. It's crazy. You have a brother now. You have friends. Bro, seriously, is everything okay? Everything's just cheery. Now, please just go. Whatever, dude. Okay, I can't take this anymore. You and your moping, like a mope. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys were entertained and I hope you learned something. Let me know if you want me to make more videos like this, because I will. Don't forget to subscribe, more videos coming out. Peace, you all have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.